Hello there everyone. In this video I will be explaining to you how you can create a C++ program for Gaussian elimination or Gauss elimination. Now I will presume that you have some requisite information or knowledge about what Gaussian elimination is. Nevertheless let me just give you a brief introduction you know of the Gaussian elimination. Now according to this um, presentation that I found over the internet um, Gaussian elimination consists of two steps that is forward elimination and back substitution where let's say you have you know some equations of like of the kind 25x1 plus 5x2 plus 1x3 is equal to 106.8 and 64x1 plus 8x2 is equal to 1x3 is equal to uh, I'm sorry that was plus <laughs> I guess I've been saying is equal to anyway so 64x1 plus 8x2 plus 1x3 is equal to 177.2 and 144x1 plus 12x2 plus 1x3 is equal to 279.2 now what you do here is that you convert this uh, these equations into these kinds of matrices that you are seeing here you know separate the variables and put them in a column in a matrix that you may call capital X and another mat matrix like uh, which would contain the coefficients of these variables and the you know the matrix on the other side would be the matrix I'm sorry uh, uh, of the RHS a column matrix of the RHS so this is your matrix and now what you need to do is you need to perform the steps such as you make and you know these diagonal elements they may be called the pivot elements I'm not too sure if technically that's the correct term to be calling them but I'll be calling them the pivot elements okay so now what you need to do for Gaussian elimination is that you need to make the elements below the pivot elements zero like here 25 is the pivot element so you need to make this zero and then to make uh, the element bef below 8 zero and then below uh, and then one is the pivot element so you cannot do much about it anyway so you can perform three kinds of row information uh, row, uh, row processes or row transformations or something like that uh, whatever it's called draw operations I believe is the correct term for that and then I'm not I will not go into further detail about what those are anyways after that you will have a matrix that looks like this and it, as you can see that 0.7x3 now is equal to 0.735 so now you have the exact value for x3 as 0.735 divided by 0.7 and then you can substitute it in this you know previous equation where you, after you substitute the value of x3.7 uh, whatever you get and then you will find the value of x2 and similarly when you substitute the values of x2 and x3 then you get uh, uh, the that was a backward elimination like uh, I'm sorry what's happening okay so that's called the backward substitution so that you can get finally the you know mm, the values of these coefficients anyways so now let's jump into how to program this code for C++ okay so here's my document yeah I'm using virtual if any um, if in case you're wondering like how I'm running this uh, Linux on or Ubuntu to be precise I'm, in, I'm using this software called virtual box provided by Oracle it's pretty good anyways so here's your program of Gaussian elimination for C++ bear that in mind okay so now what do we need to do let's go over the checklist okay so first of all let me show you one more example now as I told you that the elements below the pivot elements need to be made zero one important condition um, to this is that sometimes while you are pro uh, performing your raw operations as you can see in this example right here this example right here you can see that the first pivot element is zero and that's not gonna do very good for us in providing the answer for our equation so what we do is we swap the row 1 and 2 okay 
like you had these equations and you formed an augmented matrix here. Yeah. Bear that in mind that it is called an augmented matrix. What an augmented matrix is that it has the coefficients of all the variables and plus one more column for the arches of the equation. So overall the augmented matrix has n plus one more column for n equations but only n rows. Okay so you need to swap it and this process is called uh, pivotization or pivoting um, whatever so uh, here's a program you ask the user to enter the number of equations he will enter n then you will have to declare a matrix of n and n plus n rows and n plus one columns why because i already told you that um, your program is and the augmented matrix contains the RHS column too, so it will need to have one more column. Now, then uh, you ask the user to enter the elements of the augmented matrix row wise, and here's the code for that. I um, assume that you will understand it, it's pretty basic because if you don't understand this, then you will need to go with some basics for array inputs and outputs. And, anyways, so over to privatization. Now, how to perform prioritization? Now, prioritization is pretty easy. And keep in mind that what we are going to study is partial prioritization, not a complete, you know, set of, because a complete or total prioritization would be making the pivot elements the largest in the matrix. For example, if you see this uh, matrix right here. Now, this was zero. So what we'll do is we go over this column and find out if there exists any greater um, number and we can see that its coefficient is one so we swapped it with this but it was only partial because what other thing we could have done was to swap two with zero and we could have gotten a, even a greater element here or we could have swapped anything else you know to get a bigger value at the private elements or private points but that is total privatization is not really necessary if you perform even uh, only among rows like you find out the greatest element in a row and then exchange it by that and you don't even need to find out the greatest element in the row for example here minus 2 is pretty small as compared to 2 and 1 but all you need to do is find out if there exists any element greater than this below the below the pivot element and then you need to swap it in case the pivot element is smaller than that number so we can swap minus 2 with 1 here and what uh, we have to do is we have to swap the entire row, not just those two elements. So anyways, back to our program. So now that I have told you what privatization is, for i is equal to zero, we will start row wise, and then we will declare another variable k, which will start from the next row. And now there will be a condition if your pivot element that is i i because for example if i is zero then you are in the first row and then when i is one you are in the second row and the second row's pivot element is the diagonal element which is one one similarly so if the pivot element is smaller than any elements below it because k goes from i plus one so if you are in i zero then k is in i so if it's smaller than any elements below it then we will start a loop for j is equal to zero to swap the whole row now you can go over this code and try to understand what i'm doing or let me just give you a short review like j is equal to zero while j is less than equal to n j plus plus is because we need to swap the whole row so it is for column elements and then you create a variable temp to store temporarily the value of aij and then make aij the next element of uh, the element in the next row and that that would be a swapping hope you got that okay so now now that you have swapped uh, all five uh, you have done the partial pivoting you can move on to the next part of the you know Gaussian elimination that is to perform the Gaussian elimination which goes here and this code was to just print the pivot the matrix after privatization Anyways, now that you are at the Gaussian elimination, what you need to do here is you start reading the elements row wise, i is equal to zero, while i is less than n minus one, i plus plus. Now, so you see here that I'm not going to the last row, i is not going to the last row. Now, then you declare another variable that will go row wise, however, it will be next 
to i i is 0 and k is 1 and it will go to the last row then you declare a variable called t which will be equal to a k i divided by a i i and then for co uh, you will declare another you will start another loop for column elements and then make make the elements of the next row you know uh, according to this operation now why we perform this is pretty easy to understand now in private in Gaussian elimination what we need to do is make this minus 2 for example take this set of equations and we need to make this matrix and I told you that 1 and minus 7 here are the pivot elements while this whole is some augmented matrix now you need to make minus 2 is equal to 0 so what we do for that is you take minus 2 and you divide it by 1 which is your pivot element so similarly what I do here is I take minus 2 which is the element in the next row and I divide it by the first pivot element when I is 0 so what I get here is minus 2 divided by 1 is minus 2 then what I do I subtract minus 2 uh, I subtract uh, this t times minus t times a i j which would be 1 in this case for j is equal to 0 so t is minus 2 t times 1 is minus 2 and so t times 1 is minus 2 and I subtract this quantity which is coming out to minus 2 from a k j itself which is minus 2 right here so minus 2 minus 2 um, minus 2 minus of minus 2 will be 4 act, uh, 0 actually so thus you will make this element 0 as you can see um, so that uh, I'm sure it will sound a little tricky at first and you might be wondering like what the hell is it talking about it's just so confusing but just go over this for a minute and you would get the idea now by uh, now you can just you know make this element 0 and leave the others because you have performed a, you know, a row operation it needs to be performed over all the elements for example here we write add twice row 1 to row 2 and similarly what we are going to do is that's why it is for j is equal to 0 to j it's less than equal to 1 to n to j plus 1 because this this operation is going to happen for the whole row and in in, in doing so you will ensure that your yeah, the element below the pivot element will become zero and similarly it was only a two row matrix in case you have any matrix with further rows for example in this matrix which has three rows you would be able to uh, take this idea further and you will get zeros below your pivot elements and now you print the matrix after Gaussian elimination this is the code for that and then you perform your back substitution now back substitution was a little tricky for me while I was creating it and I'm not I'm sh uh, sure or maybe someone has a pretty easier way to do that than me so you may like to check that out any who I managed to come up with a code that would perform the back substitution anyways let let's keep back substitution a bit away for now and let's try this equation that we had here okay so or maybe this one this one looks a little better it's got some decimals in it so let's try to put this equation in our code in our program when we run it so let me open the terminal here and just okay so um I'll, let me just clear that screen up to avoid confusion so enter the number of equations so we have here three equations and okay so let me just minimize it for a moment and there's that okay nice so what are the elements we need to enter them row wise 25 5 1 1 plus 6 point 8 and okay 64 8 1 177.2 144 279.2 remember this is the augmented matrix that we are entering okay so now in our program 
we can clearly see that 25 is not the smallest value. However, the program would have run if we had then messed up with the, uh, this exposition, but still to keep uh, as a precautionary measure, we did the swapping because I told you that 144 was the largest in this column and that's why we had to replace sort these rows. Okay, so this was the matrix after privatization and then this was the matrix after Gaussian image. Now it might not be similar to this one that we have right here because human calculations can be a bit different because we have a brain and logic but computer has to follow some protocols uh, program for that matter. So, but we are getting the similar value for X3. For example, here X3 is point. Uh, let me just calculate that for you. Calculator. Come on. Wait. So, 0.2375, that is the RHS divided by 0.2187, that is the coefficient of X3, would fetch us a value of 1.08. And then here we are getting one. Uh, now keep this in mind that we got 1.08 here, and here we get 0.735. R just divided by 0.7, and we get 1.05. And I'm a little bit, um, you know, skeptical if that value is correct because I found my program to be very accurate. So I believe that 1.08 should be the better answer. Mm. We can, anyways, we can check that out by using back substitution. We can check that out by putting 1.05, 1.08 there. Anyway, so my computer calculated the value of X3 as 1.08, and then it did some back substitution, like it substituted this value of 1.08 into the previous row, and 0.5556 into 1.0858, and then you got a value. Then it took it to the arches, and got a new value and then you divided that by 2.667 it was pretty basic math right okay pretty basic algebra anyone who has done a simple course in linear algebra maybe even a, a grade 12 grade student may know that was senior high school kind of thing okay so that's you know how you get the answer in back substitution now in case you're wondering that i didn't you know explain what i did in the back substitution um, here's a code and you can pause the video, download it, whatever and, you know, have a close look at what I'm doing because to be honest, I made this program long back and I will even, I would have to, you know uh, go over it, like what I'm doing here so, okay, let's just let me see what I'm doing here, like I start, I from the last row okay so we will start reading the matrix on the last row then I had declared a matrix an array called X of uh, size n in the beginning if you might remember don't worry I will uh, you know place this code in the description and you can copy it off from there so we have an array of size n called X that will store the very the value of these variables so x i would be equal to you know i is here the last row okay so the last x for example in this case x3 would be equal to a3 and the last column so what i did was i made the value of the third variable x3 equal to 0.2375 but we know that that isn't the correct value point e and the correct value is 0 0.2375 divided by 0 0.2187. So what I do is I start another loop for j is equal to zero and j that would be a full uh, row reading, uh, column reading loop. And if j is not equal to i, you know, if the column is not the similar, uh, the value and you know, call j is not equal to i, looks pretty basic like that. Then subtract a i j into xj from xi because xi was 0.2375 and then you would subtract you know in this case a i j starts from zero it is zero this is zero and in both the 
in both of these cases i was not equal to j because here j was zero and one but i is two actually so in both these cases it was not equal to i so it went here but what it found was that aij was zero so it never subtracted anything from 0.2375 so xi still remains 0.2375 but then afterwards finally what we do is we divide xi by aii so now finally 0.2375 gets divided by 0.2187 now similarly if we go in the second row what this program does is it just gives the value 53.1111 2x2 then what it does is it start reading the row i'm sorry now it starts reading reading the row and here j is not equal to y i is 1 and j is 0 so what it does is it subtracts this multiplied by xj from this value but it is 0 so nothing happens x2 is still 53.11 then comes here but here i and j are equal so this step will not take place this step right here so now it comes here and it sees that yeah j is not equal to y and we have some value for aij so what it does is is multiply it multiplies aij by xj now that's tricky aij j here is 2 and we have already found out xj that was you know 1.0858 now we have already found out that value and we multiply point triple five six into one point 0858 and then we subtract that from 53 point this value and thus we get something looking like 2.6667 is equal to whatever you got here and then finally what it does is subtracts uh, it divides that and now you have you finally have x2 here and similarly then when it goes to the first row because remember this loop that I started started from the last row and it will go to the first row it was backward loop for back substitution now here it will start j from here here j is not equal to you no know, j is, is actually equal to i here so it will not do anything right here then j becomes this and it sees here j is not equal to i and we have a value here so j into x j j is 1 x and x2 i have already found out you know this value so to multiply this by that and it will subtract it from this and then again it will multiply this with the value that I found for 1.0858 and the x3 and subtract that and finally what you get would be 279.2 or whatever value that you have here divided by 144 and thus that's how you find out your very uh, the values you know for x1 x2 and x3 and that's how you solve uh, go, uh, you know linear system of equations using Gauss elimination and hope this uh, program helps you to understand what am I doing right here uh, thanks a lot I know this video turned out to be quite longer than I expected anyways I hope it's useful for you thanks and um, don't forget to subscribe if you like it dislike it if you disliked it but please don't forget to like or subscribe if you did actually like it. Thanks a lot.